reap support all around you in the physical world. When you throw a stone into a lake, water waves spread out from the splash. When you strum the strings of a guitar, sound waves carry the noise all around you. When you switch on a lamp, light waves flood the room. Water, sound, and light waves differ in important ways, but they all share the basic properties of wave motion. Have you personally experienced an earthquake? Did you know that you can understand earthquakes by studying waves? After an intense earthquake has occurred, we can see its destructive effects based on the collapsed buildings and cracks on the streets, right? But what is a wave? Are there types and classifications of waves? How does wave carry energy? What are the important characteristics of a wave? To answer these questions, let us infer how waves carry energy and describe the characteristics of waves such as frequency, amplitude, wavelength, and wave velocity, and how are they related to Before we begin, let us first define what wave is. In physics, a wave is a periodic disturbance that moves away from the source and carries energy with it. For example, seismic waves produced by an earthquake, which is a type of a surface wave, show us that the amount of energy carried by a wave can do work on objects by exerting forces that move objects from their original position. To demonstrate this, observe the movement of cork as the water waves are generated in the ripple tank. How are the water waves produced? Right! The vibrations made by the wave generator cause the wave motion. What is the direction of the wave motion? It moves from the source of the vibration towards the cord. How about the direction of motion of the cord with respect to the wave motion? Great! The cord moves up and down as the water waves pass along the cord. This is the reason why seismic waves cause destructive effects to buildings, roads, and other objects as they pass along. This time, let us observe and draw the different types of waves and describe how they are produced in our next activity entitled, Let's Make Waves, divided into two parts. To do this, we need a coil speed. For part A, transverse wave, first, we place a coil screen on top of the table. Then we attach a ribbon on the middle part of the coil screen. Afterwards, we may fix one end of the coil screen while I hold the other end. You may also ask someone to hold the other end and then I fix the other Make a wave by continuously vibrating the end of the rope with quick up and down movements of your hand. Draw the wave form or the shape of the wave that you have created. Once again, move the coil screen up and down and observe the motion of the color wave. Describe the vibration of the color wave. Does it move in the same direction as the wave? How does it move as waves pass by? We can observe here that the color ribbon did not move in the same direction as that of a wave motion. It simply moved up and down while the wave moved in a back and forth direction. This is what we call as transverse wave. Thus, the motion of the object is perpendicular to the wave motion. Let us repeat steps 1 to 3. This time, vibrate the end of the coil screen by doing a back and forth motion parallel to the left of the screen. Observe the waves along the coil screen. Draw how the coil screen looks like as you move it back and forth. Once again, move the coil screen back and forth and observe the motion of the coil screen. 
rotor fiber moves along the same direction as that of the wave motion. This is what we call as the longitudinal wave. Here the motion of the object is parallel to the wave motion. For our last activity, we will create a model to demonstrate the relationship among frequency, amplitude, wavelength, and wave velocity. First, let us identify the quantities used in describing periodic waves in our activity entitled Anatomy of a Wave. Place water half filled on top of ripple tank. Wait for the water to become still. Turn on the vibration generator. And observe the subsequent water waves produced. Draw the water waves as you see them at the bottom of the ripple tank. Label one wavelength in your drawing. Increase the rate of the vibrations you create by increasing the generator's wave velocity. What happens to the wavelength of the waves? We can easily observe that as the wave velocity increases, the wavelength of the waves increases too. How about the frequency? This holds true. Also to the wave frequency where it also increases in relation to the wave velocity. Let us summarize what you have learned in this lesson. Waves can be classified as mechanical and electromagnetic. Mechanical waves are propagated through a material medium which can be solid, liquid, or gas, like water wave, sound wave, and seismic waves. On the other hand, electromagnetic waves can travel in vacuum or space which includes X-ray, gamma ray, visible light, and others that belong to the electromagnetic spectrum. We will learn more about this in the next grade There are three types of mechanical waves, namely transverse, longitudinal, and surface waves. In a transverse wave, the particle movement is perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. While in a longitudinal wave, the particle movement is parallel to the direction of wave propagation. A surface wave is a mechanical wave that propagates along the interface between differing media. A wave can be characterized using the following parameters. Crest is the highest point of a wave. Trough is the lowest point of a wave. Amplitude is the height of a wave. Wavelength of a wave is the distance between successive crests or troughs. Frequency of a series of periodic waves is the number of waves that pass as a particular point every one second. Velocity of a wave is equal to the product of its wavelength and frequency, which is number of vibrations per second, and is dependent of its intensity. Wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional to one another. That is, as the wavelength of the wave increases, its frequency decreases and vice versa. Velocity of the wave is directly proportional to the wavelength and frequency of the wave given the formula V equals frequency times wavelength, which is the symbol of wavelength is lambda. Now, let us apply what you have learned in this lesson. Make a creative concept map describing what you have learned about the concept of waves as energy carriers. Write a 2 to 5 sentence reflection at the end of the lesson. Please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mad Cycle, like our videos, and hit the bell button for updates. I hope you learned in today's lesson. On the next episode, we will explain power and intensity of light in terms of its wave characteristics. 
This is Mom Leia Sanjago, your science teacher. See you all next time.